Hello everyone, my name is Roya and I read 10 books in just the last two weeks of December. I don't know how that happened. So buckle up kids because we're going to be here a little bit. Um, so the first book that I read is The Bear and the Nightingale. This follows the story of a girl named Vasilisa who can see the spirits and the old gods of her um, place in Russia and whatnot. And But this preacher comes and tries to get everybody to stop leaving offerings for those spirits and etc etc and she has a stepmother who's very devout as well because um she wanted to be a nun and she can actually see them too and she thinks they're demons definitely a really good book it however did not um kind of it didn't really blow me away the way that so many people seem to love this book we are introduced to a lot of characters at the beginning of the book so for the first maybe 100 pages and then we like never hear from them again also just the um well, it's a it's the lot of a woman and blah 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 that I just kept hearing constantly in this book about like, oh, this is just what women have to do because they're not men. And I got so tired of hearing it for some reason. I don't know, just, you know, if you want to, you know, you don't have to keep saying that to show us that this is a time period in which women were kind of just there and didn't do anything. So shish. My next read was Give Me Some Truth by Eric Gansworth, and this ended up being a really disappointing read. The only thing that I really liked about it um, was how well-researched it was about life on the reservation and all of that. Way too much of the book took up, uh, was basically taken up by a 15-year-old's relationship, romantic relationship, with a man who's in his 30s, and that was just like really gross to me, first of all, and second of all, um, I, I, I know it's not portrayed as anything romantic, but it just took up way too much of the book. It was like the main plot. And also this book was just not very entertaining. It was really boring. And the thing is too, that it's actually set in 1980. And I went 100 pages without even figuring that out because um, it's so the same. It's so told like the same as um, modern day. So I literally thought I was reading about modern day until about a hundred pages when it mentions John Lennon living in New York or something like that. And I was like, oh, John Lennon's still alive? So this has to be before 1980. And then it says something about um, East Germany being a thing. And then I was able to pinpoint kind of what um, that it takes place in 1980, but like it was virtually the same as if it were told in modern day. Um, there were also a lot of things that weren't quite explained. Um, for example, probably the biggest thing being um, the one of the main characters has a sister who has the nickname Stinkpot for by like given to her by like some of the other kids. Basically, um, that's never really explained why she earned that nickname or how or anything at all. So there were a lot of little things like that that kind of made me go like, was that did anyone you know, was like half this book cut out or something? I don't know. So I have no idea. But yeah, this I read Daughters of Morgan by Annie Cosby. And this is about three sisters in Ireland who are triplets, but they actually look nothing alike. They're different ethnicities and everything. Um, so they're pretty sure they're not really triplets. And um, basically their father, their mother died when they were really little and their father um, has been gone for longer than expected and it's their birthday and he's still not back so they're worried about him and even though this takes place in modern day they have no phone they have no um uh no technology whatsoever so overall i liked this book but um a lot of it kind of fell felt very meh because the magic system is very arbitrary and the um point of views because there are five different point of view characters and even though all the all the characters talk differently and um, they all have distinct personalities their point of views in first person really were um very much the same as each other so um quite often i was forgetting whose chapter i was reading because there were five of them and it was just a lot to juggle in a way but it was a very interesting take on Irish and Scottish folklore, and there are some very interesting aspects to this book, so I'm definitely going to continue with this series when the next one comes out, but um, ultimately this book was kind of just okay. We have another, we're back with another disappointing read in Queen of Thieves, Queen of Thieves by Catherine Vogel, and this is um, about a master thief who uh, whose personality is told to us more than shown, who falls in love with a princess despite only meeting her like twice, and suddenly she's willing to kill people for her 
just on her word that, that that this person hurt her in some way, blah, 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 when really this main character is not someone who would necessarily just go off and kill someone for no reason, all that stuff. And so this book was pretty disappointing. It was a, it was very lackluster. It was there was very arbitrary world building characters with little little to no personalities villains who kind of go kind of reveal their plot at inopportune moments and go blah ha ha now I've got you blah 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 and so ultimately this was just a very boring and very just meh read. Next I read Warrior of the Wild and I was absolutely blown away. This is a new release that comes out in February about a girl in a Viking-esque society who uh, basically her test to become a warrior is sabotaged by people she trusted and then she's exiled to the wilderness and not expected to ever return. I was not expecting to love this book as much as I did because I was not a fan of Daughter of the Pirate King at all and um, so I but I still was interested in this book um, so, and so I'm so glad that I ended up loving it. It sucked me in from the first chapter. I read the whole thing in one flight on an airplane and I'm just a sucker for stories about people being portrayed really horribly and having to figure things out. So Another February release that blew me away is Dark of the West by Joanna Hathaway. This takes place in a 1940s or so kind of world that it's a fantasy world but it has technology like photographs and airplanes all of that stuff. So I really enjoyed one of the main characters who basically his father is a general and he like made him be a pilot because he's good at math and so um, he has to um, kind of navigate his way through becoming a pilot and having to go to war when that's not what he wanted. He's afraid to die, but at the same time, he doesn't want to desert his best friend, who is also a pilot, all of that stuff. The other main character is a princess, and she took a while to grow on me, but by the end of the book, I actually really liked her as well. I actually ended up really liking the couple that they ended up being. Um, I was not... Um, thinking that I would buy them as a couple at all because they they have like nothing in common. The only things I thought that could be improved about this book are first of all there's a lot of build up to a villain who we don't actually meet by the end of this book um, because this is a series and then um, also the, this book had there, there was a lot of world building that just kind of didn't happen. Um, the only real like story we have of this world is about a dragon and a unicorn and we don't know, I mean, this is not a world that has dragons or unicorns in, in it at all. Um, so I'm not sure what kind of story this is. Like, we're not given any sort of real context for where it came from, what the folklore of this world is, even though we have this one random story, that sort of thing. But I still absolutely enjoyed this book so much, and it was so unique in other ways that I still gave it five stars. I read Castle of Lies, which is another forthcoming release, and unfortunately I only made it halfway through this book before DNFing it. Um, basically this is about um, four different characters who are stuck in a castle um, when some elves invade. And I was just not a fan of any of the characters. Um, they all kind of didn't really do anything and had mostly just personalities that were told to us rather than shown. There's a theme here in this video, clearly. And the point of view, had, uh, there were four, five different point of view characters and it changed too often. Like we got so little time with each person before it was a different person. And so I found that really hard to keep track of. Next, I read The Oddling Prince by Nancy Springer. And this is about a prince whose father actually had another son with an elf queen. And he doesn't remember that at all. He a So he actually lived with the elf queen and the son he had with her and watched him grow up and everything. And then um, he actually got planted right back where um, before he had even met the elf queen so he didn't even remember it at all. Basically we have this elf prince show showing up and the main character becomes best friends with him and they're practically inseparable but their father doesn't remember him at all and really is opposed to him even being there and is totally convinced that uh, the elf son is not really his son and he's just trying to get the throne in some way even though he said repeatedly I don't want the throne. Next I read Funny in Farsi by Firuze Dumas and this is a memoir about growing up um, Iranian in America and it is one of the funniest and also most informative memoirs that I have read um, about being Iranian and uh, my mom came from Iran at about the same you know shortly after this um, this woman did and definitely 
um, I have read my fair share about of Iranian memoirs. Actually, I really have not because there can't be enough of them. I've had so many hilarious moments that were just cracking me up the entire time while also being actually very serious in subject matters and very informative and there were parts that made me cry as well. At that time not only was there Middle Eastern prejudice like we experience today but actually Iranian specifically had a lot of hate towards them at that time just due to the um, conflict, the conflict that the U.S. had with Iran. So it definitely um, was very interesting for me to see just how much prejudice against Iranians there specifically there was back then. Um, it really goes into depth with that. And so now I kind of understand a lot more about why my mom told me not to put Farsi language skills on my resume, for example. Because in at that time, doing anything to show that you're Iranian or any, you know, emphasizing your ethnicity in any particular way would have been very bad. This is seriously a must read because it really shows um, how, like, what it means to be part of a marginalized group while also being a very entertaining read. And the last book that I read in December was The Immortal Prince by Jennifer Fallon. And you guys know that I love Jennifer Fallon, but I hated this book. Seriously, this is poss possibly the most offensive book I've ever read. Maybe it was definitely my worst read of the year, possibly my worst read, one of my most worst reads ever. Um, I was not a fan of this book at all. It had terrible queer rep. It treated women really horribly as well as having very insensitive um, coverage of the subjects of rape and slavery. Seriously, Jennifer Fallon's other books have slavery in them too, but they are treated with the sensitivity that they deserve. It, like, this book was just offensive all across the board. Like, I talk about it way more in depth in my worst video, of, my worst of 2018 video, so you can definitely go and check that out. So this book is about um, this guy who survives being hanged, claiming that he's immortal, and this woman who has to basically go and um, interrogate him, basically, and find out um, what he's what he's all about because he can't really be immortal, right? Like he's got to be a spy or something like that. Um, something's going on, but um, obviously the reader already knows that he's immortal. So with that being the only conflict that they're trying to solve in this book, and the reader already knows what's up. Like, this entire book just had no point. The only reason I continued reading this book up to the point that I did was because Jennifer Fallon's book series is always um, get better as the series go on. Like, both of the series that I've read by her, both the entirely long Hytherin Chronicles that spans three trilogies, as well as the Second Sons trilogy, they both start with a book that I kind of gave, like, three stars, and it was kind of meh, but then by the end they were amazing. So I was thinking, this book, even though it's terrible, maybe the series gets better, but by the, um, by four-fifths of the way into this book, I realized that it doesn't matter if it gets better because I still can't recommend it. I can't, even if the second book is amazing, I still can't recommend it if I can't possibly recommend that somebody slog through this piece of junk to get there. So basically, um, yeah, it's a terrible book. So anyway, those are the books that I read in the second half of December. Let me know what your thoughts are, if you've read any of them, and um, let me know what your favorite book was that you read in December, and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye!